Well, good morning, good evening, good night, Ballard Church. I don't know when you're watching or joining us today. If it's 10 a.m., or glad to see you guys in the comments. Go ahead and let us know where you're watching from, what you're sipping on. Hopefully, it is a nice pour over uh, to start your morning. If you're a Keurig person, you're still loved, and I'm glad that you're here um, at Ballard Church. But we're really excited to continue um, in our new series, Defining Moments. Uh, we love to start every single service off the same way, and that um, is with prayer. So unless you're driving, go ahead and bow your heads with me, and let's pray for service this morning. Uh, Jesus, we thank you so much for who you are. God, I pray that uh, this morning, Jesus, we would press into the word that you have for us. We'd press in uh, to the interviews that are coming up, Jesus, and that you would help us uh, not just survive, but thrive uh, in this defining moment. Lord, we're thankful for it. In Jesus' name, come on, everybody said, amen and amen. Well, church, let's worship together this morning. Away. 
Come on, that is one of my favorite worship songs. Um, I love Valor Church worship, getting able to start um, our morning off with that, even before we jump into a message. Um, in just a moment, Pastor Lance is gonna be interviewing uh, one of our church's favorite guests, and that is Pastor Shirley Lytell. Uh, but first, if you're new to Valor Church, I'd love to give you a little bit of information on how to get connected, how to find out a little bit more about Valor Church, and that is a one-stop shop that we call Ballard Church. Dot com. It's right here, uh, right below me. It's appearing on the screen as we speak. It's the magic of technology. Uh, but it's really the best place where you can give online, you can find out about upcoming events, you can watch past messages, and really see what our church has been discussing in this season. Um, it's also a great place to take next steps in your faith. Um, we make it really easy. There's actually a tab called Next Steps where you can check out all the different ways um, to grow in your faith and the ways that Ballard Church is contributing to that. But, that being said, now is a great time. Take a moment, get your note-taking devices ready, and let's jump into today's message. Well, I am so excited for today. You picked a great weekend to tune in because we're kicking off our new format for this series uh, where we're doing a number of interviews with people that I think you are gonna absolutely love that have a ton to add to the conversation surrounding defining moments. And today is a fan favorite here at Ballard Church. It's one of our favorite people, one of my favorite people, uh, Pastor Shirley Lytell. She's amazing because not only does she has a master's in divinity and she is well-versed in the pastoral side of things, but at the same time, she actually has her own counseling practice that she runs full-time at this point. So she sits with people all the time and has a ton to contribute in the conversation of mental health. And man, isn't that a conversation we need to have right now? So I'm so excited for you to join with me as, as I interview Pastor Shirley Lytell. Hey, Ballard Church, I'm so glad you decided to take this Sunday to join us. We are incredibly privileged to have Pastor uh, Shirley Lytell with us today, and I am so excited for this conversation. Honestly, uh, there's, I got to be honest with you for a second. I just have to repent in front of you today. There, you got so many video views the last time that you were on with us. Uh, it was intimidating to me. And so yeah, right. I know our church is so excited to have you back. Uh, we had a conversation not too long ago that, uh, man, had such a good response. I've heard from so many people about it. And so we've been anxious to have you back. And thank you for fitness in your schedule and your you're time. Welcome. I know you're busy with everything. And so I, I really, really appreciate it. And we're going to dive straight in today. And, uh, and really what I'm interested about is, is from the mental health side of things, I think all of us have felt um, a huge impact from everything that's happened over the last year. And there are a number of things that have happened over the last year yes, that have been wild. And the conversations that we're having with a, a few different people are really centered around the idea of defining moments and how defining moments of our life really define our view of God, of how he showed up in the midst of it. And so... Uh, in this season, when you think about, gosh, everything that's been going on as a defining moment for us, and especially as you're having people come in and meet with you on a weekly basis through your practice and, and be honest and transparent in a way that a lot of us don't have honest conversations right now right. because there's over Zoom or over a quick text or phone call. We don't have that outlet. So you have the opportunity to see an unfiltered view of people's mindset. What's been the repercussions of the fallout? I know this is a loaded question. What's been the repercussions of the fallout of everything that's happened recently from, from COVID to everything that's happened in our country? What, what have you been seeing from people who have been coming in? Well, think about when the pandemic actually hit. It was, oh, this is just a, a momentary stop on the road or, hey, you only need to be home for eight weeks and then you're going to be back to the office and we're going to get back to things as usual. And then the, the newscasters started talking about, oh, you know what, this is gonna be our new normal. And I immediately rebuked that. I said, it yeah. is not normal that we can't go see our friends. It's not normal that our children can't go to school. Yeah. Uh, it's not normal that you actually can't even go see a doctor in person. Yeah. So I started seeing depression, anxiety, escalating, people that had, actually been released from their, you know, their treatment plans coming back yeah. to say, hey, my anxiety is, is shooting up. And the longer that pandemic went on and the more the racial unrest began to just kind of increase where they were thinking it was only going to be a weak issue, yeah. you know, we're going to, they're going to be showing themselves for a week, two weeks, maybe three max. 
and now you're now in the 2021 and there is a whole different dynamic of protesting going on, the anxiety, depression has escalated. But I tell you something that's very uh, harmful and damaging is that intimate domestic violence, right? It, one in four women, one in 10 men are actually experiencing violence at the hands of their partner. Wow. And so imagine that that's actually not being addressed right now yep. because they can't, they can't, they can't get out of the house. They're quarantined. Yeah. So, you know, kind of working with, with clients that have to let me know that they're okay when they're in front of their partner while they're having their session. And so there are protocols that actually counselors have been putting in place so that they can have a conversation that, that we let them know, if you're not someplace you're not safe to talk, then we are not gonna have this conversation here. Maybe you need to go to the garage or the parking lot or yep. Starbucks. And so, uh, you know, um, also imagine over 350,000 people have died. The grief, the loss, the inability to bury them properly with all wow. their family and friends, yep. all of that is showing up in counseling sessions by Zoom. Wow. Yeah. We, stopped seeing, we stopped seeing clients, or I stopped seeing clients in March, it just wasn't safe, right? Yeah. You're in a 12 by 12. Yeah. So, at, at, well, my office is a 12 by 12 anyway. Yeah. Uh, and so you're, you're sitting, it, would, it was okay when we were sitting across, I could see your body language, yeah. I could you know, check and see how your, you know, dilations of your pupils. You're on a video call and I'm trying to lean in to make sure you know that you're cared, you're loved, yeah. that God loves you, wow. that you're in the middle of a crisis just like, lots of people in the Bible. Yeah. So it's a challenge for the counselor and for the client. Oh man, I can't even imagine. And what's interesting that you bring up is there's such a range of experience for people. And you know, it's easy for me to assume or, or make the basic assumption, I think that all of us would, mm -hmm. that uh, what I'm experiencing is what everyone else is experiencing. So if I'm feeling depressed, everyone must be feeling just depressed. But I haven't, I have been very fortunate enough to not have to grieve somebody in this yeah. period. Um, you know, and so I can't imagine the, the unique situation that that's facing right now and how people are having to adapt all over the place. And Well, you know, my father passed away in April. We had a funeral for him in May, yeah. right? We were able in the state of Arizona to have 30 people at an outside funeral. Yeah. But think about the individuals that they're used to going to the gym. They're used to going to the bar after after work, right? Yeah. And you're single. It was okay that first three or four weeks, but now you're going into week three, week four. And, you know, one of my treatment plans is that you have to get out of the house. You have to walk around your block and come back in. Uh, imagine being single and no one hugging you for wow. four to five months. So, you know, we, we take that stuff for granted if we're in relationship, totally. right? Totally. Especially if we're in relationship and we're halfway healthy. Yeah. But imagine I've got lots of single people that are still trying to figure their stuff out while they're going through this pandemic. Wow, yeah, no, that is staggering to think about, just the scope and scale. And I think for many of us, we've seen the repercussions of um, compromised ability to really stay healthy in yes. these seasons. I think we've seen repercussions in what people are tweeting out there, what they're yes. saying, what people are, are willing to say, willing yeah. to do in this season. You're like, oh man, your heart breaks because you know, especially if, if you know somebody's character, you're like, oh man, that's not normally you. And so you're seeing this kind of fallout, which leads me to my next question, I guess. Some people in a defining moment in general in our life, take out 2020 or use it as an example, mm -hmm. either come out of it better or some people come out of it worse, right? So some people take a defining moment, they leverage it, and they end up coming out better for it. And then some people, obviously, that, that is not the case. They come out of 2020 and they think, man, good riddance, thank goodness this is gone, I can't wait to get behind me. I, it's kind of a two-part question, but what have you seen as habits that people who, who end up doing well out of a defining moment mentally and, and really taking care of themselves, what habits would you say that they have? People who come out of the other side of yeah. a defining moment succeeding and thriving. Yeah. Um, well, I think they learned how to pivot yeah. sooner than later. Yeah, right? wow. Deciding that they want to be better in this moment 
recognizing that it, but it's actually a benefit that I'm home with my children, yeah. uh, that I'm home with my husband, that I have the ability to kind of change the way I show up. And I think that's the space, right? There were yeah. too many folks showing up for the, uh, the for parents, yeah. for the folks at work, for the folks at church. Uh, and now they're like, oh, now how do I want to show up right now? And that's when the whole joke was like, you know, all I have to do is get dressed up from the waist up, right? Yep. And I yep. can have my pajamas yep. on in the bottom, yep. okay? And then you realize, yeah, then your mindset changes because then you're not actually at work. Wow. Yep. And so I would encourage my clients that those of that are succeeding, they are dressing up as if they're going to church or to work wow. or out on a date, even though it means they're walking into the dining room. Yeah. Right. They're doing those things. They kind of keep their mind, you know, stable. Uh, and when I mean stable, like they're able to kind of process, this is what I'm going to do today. Yeah. This is the things that these are the things I'm going to get taken care of that I actually only need to get four things done on my to do list. Yeah. And I need to scrub the other seven. Yep. They were more intentional and specific and timely. Man, that is so good. And now, you know, why I keep a notebook with me. If you need to restart the video and go grab a notebook and start taking notes again, I'm not even gonna be mad. You can watch it as many times as you want to. Um, but man, you said some some really great things in there about habit keeping. Uh, man, I, I love the ability to pivot and finding the benefits of the things that you're doing. Because I know for me, man, I, I love my kids dearly. But after a while, it gets exhausting to be in proximity so often and then to pivot your mindset and say, man, what a blessing that I have that I get to be in their space in this season. Yeah, that, that's a great point. And so I guess on the flip side, what are you seeing um, from people of maybe things that we can avoid as practices? Maybe you're seeing like, man, people who are not coming out of this well are, are consistently doing this, this, or this. Um, what are you seeing as maybe things that are pitfalls that we could avoid, I guess? Well, I, the, the first thing that I ask my clients is, okay, when's the last time you've been out of the house? So for many of them, they could spend two, three months. Matter of fact, they started giving me these dates. Isn't it impressive? I haven't been outside in 125 days. I said, no, that's not, that's not, a, that's not a good thing. That's just yeah. not helpful. Yeah. Uh, the that's other spaces, uh, what they call it is uh, knowledge obesity, mm -hmm. where they, you're just taking in too much social media, wow. too much news, uh, too many uh, conversations that tend to be either on the controversial or the negative side. And so now their mind is all revved up and they're having a really hard time trying to decipher how do I bring my um, emotional self down, right? Yeah. So you get stuck in these places where they're not helpful. And so you start to spin. Oh my goodness, okay, if they have another run on toilet paper, will I ever be able to find toilet paper again? Oh, and you know, I, my, I'm specifically, it has to be Charmin. Yep. Extra plush, <laughs> exactly. right? And so I find myself looking at them and going, okay, when's the last time you had some other interaction, some, you know, where you've at least seen somebody that was six feet away from you? Because you realize going to the gym was helping them. They're not doing it, and they're not working out at home. Yeah. And they're not you know, taking some time to meditate and yeah. meditate on, the, on your scripture and then yeah. kind of give yourself a challenge every week that you're yeah. gonna learn something new. Uh, how many of us have learned how to bake bread? I am not one of those people. <laughs> but you know, there are lots of folks that have learned how to, to cook. So I mean, all kinds of things. Um, I think that's what TikTok has been great about, right? Yeah. How you can learn how to make something when you had no culinary skills at all. Yep. I think that's okay. fabulous. Yeah. I love so, that. but your mind has to pivot that says, I want to do something different right now. I want to show up different. Otherwise, you get stuck in a rut and your depression, your anxiety, your sense of loneliness, the isolation overcomes you. Yeah. Wow, the idea of knowledge, obesity, and you almost referenced it there at the end, pretty much that that it can work to your benefit as well. I mean, if you're, it depends on what you're feeding with. I mean, what what access do we have to unhealthy information right now? Oh. That is so difficult. I think for so many, access can actually be a detriment to us because it is so easy to find so many things that are that are just difficult to stomach and process. And so, man, what a what a great what a great point. Turn off social media. 
and find out how to bake bread. Yeah. That's your that's your that's your homework, guys. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Find out how there to break go. a and nice figure, bake. Figure out how you're going to manage your technology. It's yeah. either going to help you or it's going to hinder your ability to like self-regulate, to yeah. be, stay stable, to have a clear thought or understanding about how you perceive your world. Sure. That's so good. Wow. Um, in the whole grand scheme of everything that's happened in the last year, even as a mental health professional, you're not immune to this. Like you're not immune to everything that's happening here. You don't just walk away. You're not above it all. Um, so I guess in the hard times like this, what practices do you try and incorporate that you think other people could glean from you or start to try? Like, what, I mean, you're faced with difficult conversations all the time. And so what are practices that you have that you've built into your life, maybe boundaries or whatever it may be that you say, you know what, I have to do this and I have to keep this a priority. And if I don't, I miss it because let's be honest, this is not going to be the last hard time of our lifetime. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? This yeah. is not going to be the last defining moment for us. So, so maybe what are some things we could learn from you that you've, you've put into place? Um, I would encourage you to have uh, what you want to call an accountability partner, yeah. someone that you can connect with. My accountability partner actually is my husband first and foremost. Yeah. And that's because he can see my schedule and yep. he can see that I have overbooked myself. Uh, because I'm trying to help everybody. Yeah. And I think to some degree, you've got to humble yourself and recognize <laughs> that you've put yourself higher than you need to. Yeah. And by the way, there are hundreds of other counselors out there. Yeah. Now, I'll be honest with you, there are not a lot of people of color that are counselors. Mm -hmm. And so the need for someone of color to be a counselor and understand the plight of people yeah. of color has been literally overwhelming. So yeah. I've learned to to kind of limit how many people I'll see in a day, yeah. in a week, and then my husband is the one that reminds me to go, oh, by the way, you've overbooked yourself on this day. Wow. Sometimes you need somebody that's going to speak truth and love yep. so that we all grow into the maturity of Christ. Yep. And there's a reality that you can, you only have so much capacity, physical capacity every day, and that you also only have so much emotional currency that you can give out in a day. Yeah. So, you know, think about that you get $100 worth of emotional currency. If you spend that obsessing over social media, you have no time to give back to yourself. Yeah. You have no time to kind of figure out, okay, what do I need to do for me? Yep. Right? So I work out. I do my very best, yes, to <laughs> eat well. Yeah. Um, but I, I commit myself to kind of trying to manage my stress because when you're taking on the stress of somebody else, you've got to have some type of spiritual detox. Yeah. Reading your Bible, listening to uh, your Bible on, um, on your headphones, uh, reading things that kind of build you up in the places you have passion for. See, the reason why I can do this for me is because it's a passion for me to help yeah. people in counseling. Yep. You know, to, to be that... Christian counselor that kind of gives them so a good. different perspective yep. than potentially just the world would do. Yep. So I, I try to do those same things for myself. I journal, sometimes angrily about mm -hmm. what's not or not happening. Sure. Uh, but sometimes I'm just journaling and saying, Lord, you know, these people came to my mind. I'm going to pray for them. Yeah. So those are the things that keep my head straight every day. And sometimes it works. Yep. And sometimes it, is, it doesn't. And I think that's the other piece too. You've got to give yourself grace when it's yeah. not working your way every day. Man, yeah. isn't that the ripcord at the end of it? Is you know you can have the plan, you can have the system. Sometimes it's just not going to work, and sometimes it's just going to be an overwhelming day. Sometimes the news is just going to be too much. So to have that grace to process with yourself, uh, I think that's so good. I, I love what you mentioned when it comes to just kind of knowing your limits and inviting accountability into your life, inviting somebody to be able to call you on your stuff. Like who, who do you have that, that can call you on it without you getting offended, without you getting mad and, and snapping back at them and that kind of stuff. And I know for you, you'd, you'd never say this, but I've known you long enough to know that you, just in your heart, you're marked with compassion for people. You love people so well and you, you're really good at what you do. And so I can only imagine how difficult it must be to balance your compassion for people who are reaching out with the reality of your schedule and meeting in the middle and saying, you know what, just because if I were to let my compassion fully drive the ship, you'd be in a hole somewhere. You know what I mean? Correct, correct. Say 800 people a week and you yes. would just, you'd be burnt out and done with it. And so to balance, yeah. I think, man, what an insight for yeah. all of us though, to balance 
our compassion for people with what we need to in some degrees and, and realizing this. But yeah. you know, you said something there about balance. It's a really good word until you take it too far. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is we're constantly saying, is, you know, is my work-life balance? There's no such thing as a work-life balance. Yeah. There's a rhythm in that. So today we had a pretty good rhythm. We had some pretty good balance, right? Mm -hmm. But tomorrow, you know what? Tomorrow will have its own day. Yeah. And so if things come up and it's not as successful, it means you're on the downbeat of your rhythm, wow. okay? And you, it's gonna be all right. The question is, are you dropping the ball in the same place all the time? Good night. That's, That's good. how yeah. you wanna manage. Am I doing a good job of taking care of myself, taking care of my family, taking care of others? And there are days when I do an exceptional job and I'm helping around the house. And then there's days that I go into that office and then I come out of that office at the end of the day. Yep. Right. And so you hold yourself accountable and you, you're, you're right. You have to have people around you that you're willing to get feedback from. <laughs> That's a good way to put and it. Sometimes we don't like the people that give us feedback. <laughs> That's true. And sometimes we don't like those people because we have not given them permission to speak wow. into our lives. Wow. So, you know, a minute ago we were talking about what are the downsides of things that people, where people are not prospering right now. And that's because they're listening to too many people yeah. that do not care about their success or failure. Yep. They're just giving you commentary. Wow. And you just eating it. Yep. Instead of letting that go. Yep. Man, that is so good. Everybody's got a platform to be a critic right now. And it is oh, just. 100%. Can't give it to them. Man, that is. So, I mean, this is why I could sit here for six hours with you, but I will not. I will try to start <laughs> focusing us down towards the end. You mentioned um, that you are a place for people um, and you have a unique training and capacity for, I think, a God-given gift to do it, to, to be a place for people to spiritually detox and sit with people. Now, not everyone has that gift, but I think a lot of us have the capacity, maybe not even the training, but, but the capacity to be there for somebody in this season. If you were to challenge the church as a whole, our church, the people watching, you know what, how can they be a best support for the people around them in a season where we are seeing the, the repercussions of really poor mental health practices and people are really in a difficult spot without the training that you have and everything. But if you were to put the cookies on the bottom shelf for the rest of us, right. what would be some stuff that we can do to be a better support for our family, our coworkers, our friends in the season. What, what does that look like? What are some practical things that we can maybe do walking away? So how about acknowledging that people are struggling? Mm -hmm. I think when we step into not uh, religious, when we step into a religious realm, we assume that if people are struggling, they're not praying hard enough, Mm -hmm. They are not, they haven't confessed their sin, they're not being humble, in reality, it is a mental illness. They are actually depressed, they're actually anxious, and at some given time, all of us are a little anxiously depressed at times. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on, we live in Seattle. Yep. On, on top of the pandemic, on top of all this other racial unrest, we're dealing with seasonal affect disorder. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, that's actually real. Mm -hmm. So. For uh, the body has to recognize, the body of Christ has to recognize that God sends doctors and lawyers and God sends counselors and spiritual direction, uh, direction directors, as well as pastors yeah. to hear us out when we are grieving. Uh, you know, when you think about, you think about Job, come on. Job's friends were great until they opened their mouth. Yep. Right? If they could have just <laughs> sat there and said, dude, I'm with you, yep. it's going to be okay. No, wow. you need to give me commentary. Yeah. So as a church body, wow. I believe that we need to be uh, empathetic. We need to, be, we need to show loving kindness. We need to show the love of God and the grace of God yeah. on a regular basis when we're interacting with people, when we don't understand what's going on with them. Yep. Well, you know, you just need to read your Bible more. Uh, I've read it from cover to cover over the last 120 days, and I am still sad and depressed. Yep. So if we could see people through the love of God and the grace of God, I think that takes, I, take, I think it takes the church a long way to just stepping in, yeah. standing in the gap for people um, who can't stand in the gap for themselves. The other space that you can do is that as you, as you consistently hang out 
with your same safe social group that you begin to observe when you're becoming less and less interactive with me. Yeah. Right? It's like it's like the airport. If you see something, you say something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? <laughs> okay. So, so it's like, yeah, Lance, the last time I talked to you, dude, you you, you look like you hadn't showered in a good while. Yeah. Come on. Uh how about brushing those teeth? Yeah. yeah. What's going on? Wow. So you know, kind of engaging with the individual and realizing maybe there's something going on here other than, oh yeah, I had a hangover the other night. Yep. Gosh, that is so good. Right. You, you mentioned something that I think anybody can do that I am so bad at, to be honest, is acknowledgement. I think I am so quick to try and, and, and men, we're guilty of this. Just, just own it. We know solve. it is. We want to solve it. We want to try and move a solution or we want to avoid it. Like, you know what I mean? I would, if somebody's having a hard time, say, like, hey, let me find a way to cheer you up. Let me find a way to try and make things better all of a sudden and, yeah. and step in and be a hero. But, but to simply acknowledge pain and say, man, yeah. this is a hard time, huh? Yeah. This is so yeah. difficult. I can't even imagine how hard that must be to just sit there with somebody in that. What a skill that doesn't take any training, right. any practice. You, it's yeah. intuitive for all of us, but it's so difficult to do. So. Well, you know why it's difficult, though? Because when I see you struggle, I get nervous. Wow. Well, and so now I make it about me. It's not about you anymore. I'm making it about me. Wow. I'm nervous. You need to stop doing that. Yeah. Like, right now. Okay? Yep. And, and so when we can sit, when we can grieve with those who grieve, mourn with wow. those who mourn, right? You step right into that gap God wants us to be in, to yeah. be in ministry. See, we keep thinking ministry is, oh, we need to bring these people to church. What about empathy? What about yeah. care and concern? Come on. What about just standing in the gap for somebody where you know they can't hear your words, but you can pray for them yeah. and you can call 911 because I yep. think they're having a moment. Yep. Yeah. Come that, on. That's some strong, that's a, that's a strong position yeah. each and every time. I mean, what, I mean, it, it exemplifies to meet people with love and grace. Like exactly what you're talking about. I'm going to meet you with the love of God. I'm going to meet you with the grace of God first before I'm offended, before I'm frustrated, before I'm confused, before I shame you, before any of that stuff. Yeah. Let's meet you with love and grace because it's a challenging season for all of us. And good night. I, I, I think I have to stop the conversation before I have too many notes. And, <laughs> and what this proves no is that I have to bring you back again, again and again and again. And so that's my it. promise. That is my promise to you. That is my promise to Valley Church. We'll continue to bring back Shirley. And uh, thank you for these insights. Thank you for, for everything you brought to the table. And uh, I just want to take a moment, pray for you and pray for... Uh, really the mental health of our people in this this community. So let's pray together, church. Um, God, thank you so much um, for Pastor Shirley and everything that she brings to the table. Um, You have gifted her in such a unique way to be a light of truth to so many people, to bring hope to people who feel hopeless, um, to really see things from a new perspective. So God, I, I pray that you'd continue to just give her unbelievable favor in her practice. Um, that God, she would have words that just continue to come to the surface to help people in such a significant way. And uh, God, for the people who are watching right now who would say, you know what, I, I'm struggling when it comes to my mental health. I'm really, I'm really not doing well. God, would you begin to step in in your own supernatural way? God, would you show hope right now? Would you breathe, uh, just bring peace yes. where we don't think peace is possible? God, would you bring community? Would you bring friendships? Would you just bring a new side of the equation? God, if we have to pivot in this season, if we have to change our practices, give us the strength, the courage, and the wisdom to do it. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What an amazing morning um, at Ballard Church Online as we kicked off our brand new series, Defining Moments. I, I love it when Pastor Shirley comes. She's always dropping wisdom, uh, things that are able uh, for us to share with our loved ones, share with people we know. And I want to encourage you, that's one of the best things you could do um, each week is just clicking that share button, making sure we continue to just spread this message and everything that Ballard Church is doing this season. Other than that, we'll see you guys next week for week two of Defining Moments.